So I had this fabric in my workshop from old projects and an idea. What if I made it into a cosplay from the very best anime about slayers? No, not that one. This one. Cue the fabric cutting montage. So which character am I making? This one. Oops, wrong picture. I'm making her. Not that picture. No, this one's weird. I'm having some trouble finding a good reference for her. Nope. This show's like 30 years old and it's kind of hard to find good pictures because they didn't have budgets yet. Okay, this one's pretty good. I'm making Amelia. Don't worry, the cutting montage is almost over. Now we're talking. So when I'm sewing stretch fabrics, I prefer to baste pieces together before serging the seams. If you baste with a contrasting thread, it's easier to remove the stitches when you're done. I don't always do this, but for the purposes of this video, let's pretend that I do. I'm making all of the pink trim on this costume out of scuba knit. Scuba knit works great for cartoony designs. It adds some stiffness and structure to costumes. When you're making a cape, it's a good idea to hang the pieces for a few days to let the material stretch. I'll explain why later. Making progress. Energetic enough for Amelia? I don't know. To add structure to the puff sleeves, I'm flatlining them with more scuba knit. Yay, the sleeves passed the poof test. After the cape has had time to hang, I even out the hem. The lining layer stretched out more than the outer layer. It's helpful to hem the cape after doing this so it keeps it from looking wonky. More progress! Yeah, you can really tell I'm phoning it in with this voiceover. I patterned Amelia's collar in nine pieces with a lot of opposing curves, so I was a bit worried it wouldn't work out in real life like it did in my head. To make sure all of the pieces fit together properly, I did some prep work. First, I marked off the seam allowance line on the pieces. It was important that I lined up the sewing lines well or one piece could throw off all the others. I made notches at points where the fabric would need to pivot to fit the opposing pieces. Then I eased the pieces together. On pieces where I needed to match up a convex curve with a concave one, I base along the sewing line of the concave piece. Then I clip along the seam allowance, making cuts about every inch or so. Doing this will allow the concave curve to match the convex curve. Ah, 
After the collar is assembled, I stuff it with some flex foam. Using a walking foot, I sew along the pink trim pieces. This will give the collar some added dimension. Have you ever wondered how to add inseam pockets to something that you're overlocking? If you're still watching, here's a little tutorial as thanks for your commitment. With right sides facing, pin the pockets in place where you want them along the side seam. Next, sew the pocket pieces in place along this side seam. Cut a notch in the seam allowance just above and below the pocket piece. Run the seam attaching the pocket through your serger. Make sure to fold the remaining seam allowance away from the cutter and needles while you do this. Fold out the pocket. With right sides facing, pin the garment together along the side seam and around the pocket. I like to baste before I run something through my overlock machine, but you can skip this step if you're chaotic evil. When you're sewing the side seam and reach the pocket, drop your needle, lift the foot, and pivot the fabric. Also, don't do this. Don't put your finger this close to the needle. Use brain cells and a tool if you need to manipulate fabric when sewing. Now for the meat of this little tutorial. When you reach the pocket when overlocking, pivot the fabric into a straight line. Do this a second time when transitioning from the pocket to the garment side seam. This last little bit helps to hide the pocket in the side seam, so it's technically optional if you're chaotic evil. On your sewing machine, sew a short seam at the top of the pocket along the overlocking. Repeat this at the bottom of the pocket. These stitches should extend a little bit beyond the adjoining pocket seam, both above and below. Now you have a secret pocket for keeping secret snacks in. She's almost ready to fight for love and justice. The collar and the cape are held in place with an absurd amount of snaps, so just in case I decide to do flips or ride a roller coaster in this or something, I'm only going to show you an early stage with just a few snaps in place so you don't see how unhinged it actually looks. On to the accessories! I decided to paint some boots I slightly modified instead of making boot covers. I hate making boot covers. Anyways, I'm using Angela's paint in mint. I 
I decided to speed up drying between the layers by using a blow dryer. There's probably a good six or seven layers of paint on these boots. It starts to look and feel like pleather, but thankfully Angelus has good flexibility. On to the wig. I started with a $12 wig that looked a little rough straight out of the bag. So naturally, I made it look worse by crimping it to add volume. This is the ugly duckling stage where you question all of your choices. But hey, it's not so bad after a haircut. I saved the best part until last. It's time to make whatever the heck this is. Amelia, it looks like you're wearing a dead Muppet. I've decided it's probably supposed to be a reticule, which is the precursor to the purse. Going off of that, I decided I wanted to make it a functional bag. When working with premium Muppet pelt, it's best to clip from the backside of the pelt with the tip of your scissors so that the fur isn't cut. I felt like that needed to be said in an infomercial voice. I lined the rest of the bag with some scuba knit that I'd used for the trim on the costume to add a little extra structure to the shape of the bag. Next, I give the fur a nice brush out. This will pull the fur out of the seam lines so they're not as noticeable. A fine tooth comb like this one makes a huge difference. I added some elastic to the top of the bag so it makes it easier to get stuff in and out of. And here's a look at the finished reticule. The gym is attached to the costume on pin studs with locking backings so I can take them off when I need to put the costume in the washing machine. You know, after doing all those backflips and stuff. Dun, da, da. And here's the finished costume. Time to photo shoot before I get grubby fighting injustice. Wait, are you still around? Cool. Well, for the dedicated, here's some of our photo shoot. Pretend there's some background music from the anime. I can't actually put it in here because the video will get pulled, but just imagine it. You know, Amelia likes Justice so much. I wonder if she'd be friends with Batman. Nah, probably not. He's probably too morally gray. Anyways, thanks for watching.